staring at a gaggle of white people's feet. <laughs> um, I mean, it's the things that stand out and stay with us. Yeah, and I don't even think you wrote that. It wasn't even as a criticism. It was like, well, here's the reality. This is what I'm seeing. Um, so here is this tradition that has offered so much to 21st century people. It's kind of risen up from thousands.
which is again like what the 21st century West knows as a headline um, about Buddhism, and that this in fact is not the primary practice for most of the world's Buddhists, so that it's a non relational way of developing community, which more, has more to say about us than about the ancient tradition. Yeah, I think, um, I think two things are happening. I think we are in the West, and yes, primarily white folks, primarily white folks of uh, a level of a certain amount of privilege, because we would have to be of a certain amount of privilege to go off to Asia and yeah. bring package up, package up te- teachings and bring them back, and sometimes package up teachers. <laughs> yes, that's right. But also, you know, when you talk, and I've spoken with many of them, these wonderful these kind of mothers and fathers of Western Buddhism, but they they also will describe this spiritual emptiness that they were uncovering right. in what they had been handed as a life. Sorry, go on. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So they are of some amount of privilege um, uh, responded to what they needed. Mm-hmm. And so it's not a criticism to say, oh, look, the white people went and, you know, made meditation important when that's not what the rest of the, the, the majority of Buddhists are practicing in the world. The, the criticism is not that meditation was made important, but the, the, the grip on it and the, therefore, denial of everything else that might be expressed and generated from these teachings in modern times, in modern society, but through a different cultural lens, are set aside as not the real thing, not the true thing, not the pure thing. What would you name, um, and, what, what for you is in that ecosystem of practices and impulses? Um, well, I, you know, I certainly think the chanting practice, right, mm-hmm. and... Uh, well known that uh, Nietzsche and uh, Buddhism and uh, what most people are have been familiar with if they've heard of black people practicing Buddhism they think of Tina Turner and um, and uh, uh, as, as you know chanting Namo Myo Renge Kyo hmm. and that we talk about Buddhism as being largely white and actually there is an enormous number of people of color uh, in the Soka Gakkai uh, sect yeah. But it's dismissed almost to the point of appearing non-existent in our mainstream, as much as Buddhism could be mainstream, <laughs> magazines and media. We almost never talk about Soka Gakkai, about the chanting Buddhists. We even call them chanting Buddhists, uh, uh, right? As if yeah, that's so a interesting. pivot off of the real thing. So we have chanting Buddhists, and which means that by default, the rest of Buddhists are not chanting Buddhists. Mikuni, diesel, uh, Vipa, Vipasta, mm-hmm. uh, diesel and Kitter. so that's the um, mashup of dominant culture that has incredible um, impact and a spread in terms of its um, ability to affect the, the world and how the world understands itself and what's important and what's deemed as um, valuable and therefore not valuable. It's a capitalist orientation to even spirituality. Tippett and this is On Being, today with Zen priest and social visionary Angel Kyoto Williams. I want to also talk to you about love. I mean, you first got thinking about love with bell hooks. And I have to say, I mean, I think we forget, uh, but we may be remembering that, you know, the great, not just spiritual geniuses, but social reformers have used this L word, right? Love. Mm. And it was 
it was absolutely central to the civil rights movement. And I hear this word surfacing everywhere. And mm. also an attention to how we have to how we have to revive it, how we have to fill it with mm -hmm. connotations that take in the complexity of us and the hardness of what's before us. I mean, you've been thinking about this, the role of love in movements, I think for a couple of decades. And I, I wonder how your thought on that, also what you see in the world is evolving right now. Yeah, I think you were pointing towards it. Um, Bell and reading Bell and getting an opportunity to meet Bell also uh, gave me uh, a lens into the possibility of love being something that I could, not only could, I'm going to say, that I had to bring into the language of my perception of the world. And that love was not to be limited to my bedroom or my family right, right? just right. people that i um thought that i liked that what i was doing in the past and what we often do and where our culture calls us to do is to use love to be a quantifier 